Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Maddie, I'm going without a script. Let's see how this goes. Woo! Hot damn. Mm. See, everybody thinks when you catch a leprechaun, you follow it to the gold. No, you take them and you squeeze the little bastards. They drink so much, it's like pure liquor. Anyways, as many of you know, Maddie and I just recently came back from the second year of Reckoning LARP. By the way, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pointing at videos a lot over here, but YouTube only lets us link so many, so links are gonna be in the description for most of these. But I thought this would be a really fun opportunity to go over some of the projects that we've done fairly recently, and honestly, some kind of further back in the past, that we had a chance to pressure test during that LARP. Basically, it's a good opportunity to check our work, see where we need to improve, kind of like where my designs were faulty, or which ones just actually worked. So without much further ado, let's get into it and uh, talk, talk about our skills. Normally, I do the level up thing, but we're just, we're just chit-chatting today. Grab yourself a drink. We'll have some fun. So the first category I think we'll go over is actually like what I was wearing, the clothing for the trip. And I think I'll start, in no particular order, just because it's what's here in front of me, with this duster I made for the uh, Level Up LARP challenge. Basically, during this episode, I had to take a piece of Berg Snyder clothing and adjust it to be something that my character would wear. Let me just go ahead and toss it on right now. And this honestly really worked super well. For kind of winging it, like I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that project, so I just cut it down the middle and I, I gave it some kind of fancy ties on the side or whatever. But in general, it was probably one of the nicest things I wore during the trip. My character is very like, he's been a ranger for a long time and most of his clothing are kind of ratty or whatever. And this just, it looked nice, it fit over all of my stuff and it was super comfortable to wear. Not only that, but because of the slits in the little side, my weapons were able to fit like perfectly in between between them so they'd even flowed nicely and just had nice little openings where I can grab my swords at a moment's notice and I had to grab my sword at many a moment's notice I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it five stars we'll do a rating system it was five stars that's ten stars five stars damn leprechaun why hello there now don't panic I've decided to take over this little channel and honestly you're the better off for it after all this so-called clever couldn't even protect his own I've got you now, you mother... Oh, <laughs> hi there. Sorry, I've been, uh... I've been fighting with that hacker for, like, the past month, and it's been killing me. Honestly, it's my own fault. If I had just used today's sponsor, Surfshark, from the very beginning, I could have just protected all of my information and stopped this whole thing from happening. They have 3,200 servers in over 65 countries, and you can use an unlimited number of devices with just one subscription. Surfshark would have given me anonymity and protection against malware, hackers like this Marvel villain themed loser here, even on public Wi-Fi. Now, if you want to avoid my mistake and get an exclusive Surfshark deal, just enter the promo code SKILLTREE for an extra three months free. You can do that at surfshark.deals forward slash SKILLTREE. Okay, while I correct the damage already done, you can get back to whatever today's episode was. I think it was about, oh here, idiot classes by professional dumbass. Wait, what? Damn it, he got to my schedule too. Oh no. Well, we're talking about things we've worn. I'm gonna go ahead and call this thing my my friggin' MVP. It is again for Berg Snyder. Um, it is the cloak that I used to like make my wanderer's cloak. I had taken the regular green woolen Berg Snyder's cloak. I waterproofed it with some Nick wax, I believe it's called. I added a lining to it, and then I added all these like secret pockets and stuff to it. Check out the episode. It was a really fun build. But this thing was a lifesaver in so many ways. First and foremost, it was like stupidly cold during this LARP. Like really, really cold. And it also had some inclement weather, like it rained at some point. So having something that was waterproof and also just really warm when i had this thing on i could just wrap myself up in it it has fur lined pockets because we're real posh it was just comforting it fit me right it didn't get caught up it wasn't too long it was really perfect not only that but because my character is a sneaky rogue type um, in order to go into any of the camps that we would be visiting for like the night or whatever, they always take our weapons. My character does not like being without his weapons. He always feels like it's a trap. But as I demonstrated during that video where I made these, you can actually put put your swords, put your weapons right in the little pockets here. And then when you go to have people check, you just you, you fold the cloak over it and you open it up and people can't see that they're there. Honestly, almost every camp I went into when they're like, let me check your weapons. When I was wearing that, I 
always had weapons on me. I was like, I don't have any. And I'd open it up and they'd be like, all right, come on in. And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. It was one of the things like role play wise, it just made me feel kind of like a badass spy. So role play wise and functionality wise, I absolutely love that build. That one came out great. Honestly, the majority of the clothing ones came out good. Like I'm gonna revisit this one because I know I mentioned it in the last time um, we, we talked about things that worked and things that didn't. This is my, my Rwanda cloak that I had waterproofed. And honestly, still works great. There was a night where it was downpouring and this thing was a lifesaver now that being said there's a couple of things about it that i don't particularly care for first and foremost the smell of the beeswax over time especially after it's been stored for a while um it's kind of musty and it's hard for me to figure out the best way to clean that because i imagine if i just wash it i'm gonna wash away a lot of that beeswax so yeah even now it kind of has a musty smell that i don't care for the second thing is I would more call it water resistant at this point than waterproof. I don't know if I need to re-up the wax on it, but like I had it swooped over my head and I'm hunched and it is like downpouring, raining on me. And I'm definitely holding off most of the water. But over time, it does start to saturate. And after a little bit, like I'm getting wet, not nearly as drenched as I would if I didn't have it, but it for sure isn't waterproof at this point. So yeah, I'll give this one, I, I think I'm gonna give it like a three star. I love it, it still works and it does what I need it to do, but it definitely has, has some problems. Other return reviews that I've done in previous years but I wanted to touch on again is like the first cuirass I ever made and also my shoulder armor here. At this point, my shoulder armor has become part of Gareth's costume. Gareth is the character I play. And like this thing, is consistently a five star it like telescopes so it, it's super like flexible when i need it to be it's kind of just a cool looking piece i really like how it feels on me it fits over everything and it just works it never feels in the way i'm really happy with it and this cuirass i think when i was making the tandy leather one i talked about how this area right here ended up pinching me a lot and was really uncomfortable not only that but if you go back to that original build I had put straps with buckles along the sides here. You'll notice now that they have grommets with little like lacing that goes through it. And I had actually cut these in to be a lot smaller, to be like when you put your arms this way, the space this would cover without it digging into my arms. And yeah, it was way easier to put on and none of this hurt me at all. So those adjustments really, really helped with this. That being said, there is still a problem with me trying to get it on by myself. So I escaped to the tent to go put this thing on and I I so dearly wish I had a camera rolling for your sake, not for mine, while I was trying to do it. I was stuck inside of it and I'm trying to wiggle myself in, I'm trying to push it down and just like the shoulder things, it, it kind of, it goes in and out, it like telescopes in and out, which makes it really maneuverable once it's on. But as you're trying to slide up into it, all these little panels get stuck and they get stuck like up here. So while this is down, your arms are still up like this because all of the leather's here. I was like inchworming my way down trying to get it to fit. It was, it was not easy. Now I'm sure like this is why people had squires and stuff back in the day. If I had somebody to help me put it on, it'd probably be a breeze. But for how difficult it is to put on, I'm gonna lower this one, the shoulder one, a five all day long. I'm gonna lower this one down to a four just because of how hard it is to put on. Once it's on, it fits me super snug. It moves with me. I don't even feel it on. It's super comfortable here now. Love everything else about it. But putting it on, man, whew, what a hassle. My tent was so hot too. It was so hot, I was dying. I hope you don't mind me revisiting some of these older builds. Um, I just think it's a good idea to show like, not only the first year did it work, but it continues to work. I wanna show longevity in these projects, not just like a one time it worked thing. The one that is a new one to this year is actually this belt I made here. This is the one with all the little connection points that go onto it and the places to put my swords. Actually, I think this part of it's only like the bandolier part of it. I don't know where I put the other part of it. Anyways, this ended up being fantastic. This is gonna be another five because it was the, the belt I wore throughout the entire trip. The system I put in place for it to buckle and stay together where like this little loop just ties back in on itself and has one of these Sam Brown buttons that worked way better than the like ring belts that you have to loop in on itself. This never came loose. It held everything tight. It had a place for both my swords and a whole bunch of rings for me to hang other stuff like pouches and whatever off of. I found that super useful. I'm gonna, you know what? 
I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a four, actually. And this is why. And it's my own stupidity because most of you have told me this in the comment section a thousand times over. But when you're using those Sam Brown buttons, the little buttons with the stud on the back, you're always telling me, like, add a little bit of super glue to the threads or add a little bit of, like, nail polish, you say, to the threads in order to lock it into place. On this belt, I didn't do that. And immediately, those stupid buttons came off. That's not a problem with the belt. It's a problem with me being a moron and not following the right processes. But I had to end up, like, tying a little loop of, um, like, cordage through those holes to hold everything together. Not a big deal, but it was a pain. It, it, it was a little bit of a pain. Now that concludes the clothing section of the things I've made that we tested out. I think now we're going to move on to some of like the carry-alongs, right? The things that I brought with me, accessories, if you will. And the first one is one I've lovingly dubbed the war crime bag. So many of you in the comments section was like, hey, putting the right cross symbol on there, that's a war crime. Which I learned it is a war crime. It is a war crime if you're in a war zone. The, the, point that you guys did say that 100% I agree with is if you bring this out and about and it has a symbol on it people are going to think that there's actual medical equipment in there which could be detrimental so we bought a whole bunch of like medic grade equipment we made this thing an actual badass first aid kit 100% if anybody was to see this in any kind of situation they can get into it had everything that like one of those little military grade like travel first aid kits um, has it, it has all of that. That being said, we still didn't take it out into the field. We had it with us um, for one reason and one reason alone. And that's because the little pockets that come with it, these little detachable pockets are dead useful. They hold a whole bunch of stuff and because of the way we made them, so the way they're strapped on is they have this little bit of leather that goes through a loop here and then the cordage wraps around and ties around a button. That actually just so happens to work perfectly with your belt. It's super easy to get in and out of. You can take them off and like throw them to people if you need to. So these were used throughout the entire trip. I think Maddie had a whole bunch of these on her. I know I had a couple of them on me. And don't worry, I will change the color of this. I promise. I've heard you. I agree with your points 100%. And we brought it just because I wanted to feel out how things would carry with the bag kind of while we were traveling and stuff um, and i did notice some problems with the design the biggest one being these big main pockets here they're fantastic they hold everything but if you put something like a bottle in there like we had a few like potion bottles or whatever if you put something heavy like that in there because there's no structure to it it tended to like lean off to the side or warp the bag and things might fall out so i think i'll probably go back and add maybe like a like a chipboard in the space kind of that sewed clothes right here just to give a little bit of structure to the back of that pocket there and make it a little bit um, easier to hold heavier things but yeah the bag itself i'll give like a three because it, it primary job is holding stuff by itself and it did kind of deform a little bit and had trouble holding things and also you know the war crime-ness. I promise I'll change it. I promise. But the actual little pockets that are in it, these things by themselves are a five. I will make these just for like hanging on my belt. They work perfectly. Another thing that worked perfectly is this little like sewing and leather care kit. I'd made this a little while back. It's one of those little fun inventions that like you unbutton it and it opens up and everything you could possibly need to to do like quick repairs and sewing is in there and then this little little roll up here has a whole bunch of leather crafting tools now though i didn't need to use the sewing portion of it i did end up using some of the needles in there and a bunch of the leather crafting tools to correct a few things just to make some pouches hang a little bit better and also um, maddie had made these little leather badges for her guild and the way i had, had positioned it so things can like strap into it or whatever so you can and put it on you just didn't work i put them together when it was wet with the dye and when they dried all the little straps in the back end up being so tight you couldn't get anything in them luckily i had this so i was able to re-punch some holes you know make little grommet spaces for things to go into so this turned out just fantastic super light to pack in everything i need is right here in this nifty little package it worked out great i'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one a five i'm happy with this one it worked out fantastically all right, so next I wanted to go over my own little design for like a better LARP quiver. So the problem with using regular quivers with LARPs is that the arrows have these giant like foam points at the top so you don't hurt anybody. The problem is you can only fit so many of them in your quiver and because they're head heavy, they kind of like to fall out a lot. 
I think if you're gonna use a regular quiver like this, it definitely needs to be a hip quiver. And even then they kind of stick up in your way a lot. So with that in mind, I made this little contraption here that holds them up like so, allowing you to wear it on your back, kind of like you would know, see in a movie or in a video game. It makes it really easy to reach back and grab them. And this worked out great, though I didn't get to use it throughout most of it because I had actually given it to our friend to use. She found that she wasn't as comfortable using swords and wanted to try to be an archer, so I let her use this and test it out. This did exactly what it was needed to do, so I want to give it a high grade, but I'm gonna have to skirt between three and four. As a LARP quiver and for what it's designed for, absolutely works great. She did say that she wished one of these little rings here had a swivel on it. I don't feel that, at least with the way I do it, I like it to stay put so that it doesn't move on me. But um, that's the critique she gave. She thought that this should have a little bit of a swivel on it. The real issues I'm having is actually twofold. One is the little back pockets I made here. Because I was kind of in a rush, I only used adhesive on the little stoppers that stop the pocket from closing. And they started to come off after a time. Not a big deal. All I have to do is throw some stitches in there and it's going to take care of it. But still, it's something I should have done ahead of time and something to think about. But the biggest problem here, let me take these arrows out so I can show you. The biggest problem is actually how much the form is giving way here. You see how it's misshaping a little bit? Now, it didn't do that throughout the entirety of the event. It actually stayed really well, even though like our friend was rolling around on the ground and had fallen down a few times and stuff, it kept its form well. What happened was, it actually ended up getting caught in the rain while we were trying to pack it like, it rained and then it hailed and then the sun came out. And towards the end, it was raining so hard that we just ended up kind of throwing stuff into the car. But when you get leather wet and then you press it into a shape and it dries, that's the shape it stays in. I think I can correct it. I can just moisten it out, put it in the shape that I want it again, like fill it, fill this cavity with like clothes or something and just puff it back out and let it dry that way. But it's something to be aware of because it lacks an internal frame there, it totally can kind of bend up that way. So I think the next time what I'd probably do is add little ribs inside of it that just kind of go from like the, the top board or the center board here down to this bottom board to hold that form. And then more going from the center board here up to the top. Maybe just like a few slats so that it has something to push against so it doesn't deform at all. But honestly, for what it was designed to do and as its first real pressure test as like a different version of a LARP quiver, it absolutely did its job. It was easy to grab arrows for. Um, it stayed put where you needed it. it. It did its thing. I'm very, very happy with it. The last little accessory I'm gonna talk about is actually my little my little water bottle here. This was great um, specifically for holding water. Like I know I drink a lot of other things, but when you're at a LARP event where you're running around, you're having combat, the sun is beating, but this thing holds a whole bunch of water. It holds it really well. Um, and it was my go-to throughout that whole adventure for hydration. This thing worked fantastically. And I don't have it with me right this second. It's still amongst all the things that I packed up, but this horn mug that I made here also was an MVP. That's the one I drank all the special things out of, and it works out great. Every event I brought it to, it just, it works. It doesn't leak at all. The little horn handle, if you, you pull on it a little bit, it gives just enough space so you can hook it onto your belt, and then it snaps itself shut again, holding it to your belt. So it just stayed on my belt the whole time, and I walked around, and people were like, hey, you want a drink? Which, by the way, all of you who watch this show and were with us at that event, oh, cheers, I appreciate you, thank you for gaming with us. But I am fairly certain you got together and you're all like, hey, maybe we kill Clever this trip. I don't know, maybe we kill him. I think that'll be fun. Because everybody I walked by was like, hey, you want something to drink? And I, I didn't, I wanted to be polite. And I'm like, absolutely, I'll drink your drink. But like, after the 10th person, I'm like, I should just drink. Mm. You almost killed me. But that night I went to bed and luckily I had so much water because, oh man, the world was spinning. <laughs> you were all very friendly or again, diabolical and you know how to kill me. So cheers to you. All right, the last things I kind of want to talk about are the really big projects we did this year. Starting with the vanity here. This thing was so much fun. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one into pieces. First, something that large, the, the primary design was to make it so it packed up tight. And this thing folds down to be completely like flat, which is super important because look at this clip here. 
of, of how tightly packed my car was. My poor little car, you couldn't fit anything else inside of it. Literally, there was one point in which I had one of those little packs of like the plastic ponchos in case it got really bad and we needed it in an emergency. And they're only about this big. And I have the doors open and I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna fit this tiny little package. I couldn't fit anything else in that car if I tried. But this thing totally fit in there. I packed it early to make sure it did. But it, it didn't take up a lot of room. It was completely flat. That right there, that feature, that gets five stars by itself. Then when folded up, it was a very useful thing to have. The little mirror was useful. Having that surface there and the little, little doors to store stuff in was useful. But I'm gonna go ahead and overall give it a three and it's not anything to do with the functionality like all the bits and pieces will work you can you can do the, the water and all that kind of stuff the problems with it is one the uh, it needs feet of some sort on the bottom of like a tent surface the tent has like a fabric we put like drop cloths down to, to give it more of that feels so you're not just sitting on the plastic of the tent but when you go to open the doors they were digging into that fabric and it got to the point where you almost had to lift lift up the the vanity so you can get the doors open so i think little feet or some sort of razor needs to happen in order to bring it up a little bit to be make those doors more useful also because it was so low you almost need like a, a small like a pillow seat or something in order to make it more useful otherwise you're kind of hunched over it um, there was one morning where I shaved in it. I, I was, you know, sitting there doing my thing in the tent. It worked great, but like I had to be really low to use it. So I think the the solve for that is to maybe either make a base that goes along with it where legs kind of fold out just to bring it up. It only has to come up like, I don't know, maybe six inches to a foot. But to bring it up a little bit, I think that would add to the usefulness of it for sure. Again, everything it was designed to do it did. It did just fine. There are just those little tiny things when you're actually using it that could totally be adjusted. The other large thing that I used that we brought to this event was actually my bed. This thing was designed to fold away and become little crates so you can store other stuff with it and make it small enough so it will fit in my tiny car. Again, breaking it up into usefulness, it did fit into my car. That was awesome. I didn't actually end up using the legs as crates because by the time I had other stuff packed up, that would have taken up more space than I needed. Luckily, they did just come apart and they all nested into each other. So they only really took up about this much space. So that still worked out just fine. And then sleeping on it, super rock solid. I love that bed. Like there was no movement in it. It was really strong. Never once did I feel like it was gonna creak or give or anything. It was perfect. The only portion that I had trouble with, and again, I think this is a, a spot where it's me not thinking things through thoroughly enough, was actually putting it together. I should have marked which legs went with which parts of the bed. Because even though I measured it out so it was like exactly three inches down and four inches over on every surface, they still didn't match up perfectly. On the hottest day, which was the setup day, I was in the tent sweltering and I'm taking the bed apart and then putting it back together and some of the holes would fit, but then some of the other holes wouldn't line up. So I'd have to take it all apart again and try a different configuration. I took that bed apart and put it back together. No lie, like 10 times. I just couldn't get, I couldn't get it to go together. When I finally found out the correct configuration, I immediately made little marks in the thing. So I just knew like this one goes here. So that'll never happen again. I'm gonna give that bed, I'm gonna give it a strong four. It's leaning towards the five, but like there are still things, I think I even mentioned in that video, I wanna make it more clean to pack up. Um, at, at a certain point, it's just kind of like pile of wood. So that would be cool. Maybe like a little travel sack for it or something, but I really did like it. It, it served its function absolutely perfectly. I have no problem with how it served its function. Just the putting it together and the transporting could be kind of a pain. And this fair viewer leaves me with my final thing I want to assess. And that is my little bounty coins here. Now, if you remember, I learned a bunch of different ways to make my own coins. Um, and the one we used for the actual bounty coins themselves was the striking method. Basically using this bad boy right here with the two different dies that I had made, where you put the metal in between them and you hit it with a hammer and boom, you got a coin. And this is my favorite thing. Like I'm gonna go above five, I'm gonna call this a six because not only were the coins like 
one of the best parts of the game, at least for me and for a, a lot of people have mentioned that they really like this portion of the game, was the bounty system. Basically, someone would come up and pay us a service fee and then they could put a bounty on someone. So like they paid us two silver coin and then they put a five silver bounty on somebody's head. We would then take a bounty coin and give it to the person who has the, the bounty out on them. That is lootable. So whoever kills that person and takes their bounty coin, they bring it back to us and they receive the five silver bounty that's on their head. That one mechanic caused so much game. It was so fun to see people like hunting others who had the bounty coins and like coming back with it and slamming it down. I had to count out a bunch of coin. It felt so cool to do. So not only was that great, but then the system in general, like this was really easy to make and it's kind of janky, but the night before we left, I busted out like 10 bounty coins. It was damn near one o'clock in the morning and I'm like, we need some coins. So I'm putting them in there and I'm hitting it with the hammer and it just, it happened all very quickly. This turned out to work really, really well, really efficiently. And um, I just, I couldn't be happier with how easy it was to bust out a whole bunch of coins when I needed it. So not only the end product, but the process itself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my rules and give it six stars. I really like how that came out. And with that, this ramble session is over. I hope you enjoyed it. I really like going back and seeing kind of what worked and what didn't work and finding ways to get better at the things we do here. Because really a big part of leveling up the skills is realizing what you do incorrectly and what doesn't come out right and figuring out ways to make it better. No, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. Mmm. Tastes like liquor and spite. So good. Mmm.